In this section, we're going to be covering what is the meterpreter. The meterpreter is short for meta interpreter, and it's a special post exploit payload that executes directly in the memory of a running process. What makes the meterpreter unique amongst the other payloads that are on that come with Metasploit is that it uh, allows you to have a communication channel to a compromised system where you can run other commands, launch programs, gather information from the system. Most exploits and payloads, they do one operation. They exploit the system and they'll create a user. They'll exploit the system and then they will do privilege escalation. They'll exploit the system and they will gather information from it. They won't, they can't do it all. So that's what makes the meterpreter a little bit unique. The other things that meterpreter does or problems that it solves from a compromised system is it hides its processes from being displayed on that compromised system. It does this because they exist inside the actual compromised process. Also, it offers a flexibility in performing other operations that you can do on the system. All commands that are run through the meterpreter will execute in that context of that running process. Meaning, if you compromise a process that's running as a regular user, you're going to only be able to do what that regular user can do until you escalate privileges through other means. But once deployed, the meterpreter is going to provide you an API by which to be able to do some of those things. This API has some scripts in it that will allow you to do things like show the processes, get PID information, and migrate between different processes in order to eventually get you to that position that you want to get to. So let's take a look at what moving from a system on and getting Meterpreter installed might actually look like and get a Meterpreter instance running on a machine. So we have a our console running, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to find out what the system is doing or running. This, a scan is normally done that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a real quick nmap scan, and we're going to nmap this particular device, and we're going to see what services come back on that system and what ports that they're running on, because this is going to be the means by which we pivot into the machine and figure that out. Now that it's complete, we can see that on port 8022, we have a Apache Tomcat. So let's take a look at what that is. We find that it's running this Desktop Central 9 managed engine. And this, we can go and actually search through the Metasploit exploits and see if we can actually find an exploit that we can leverage against this particular type of engine and maybe even get a Meterpreter instance running on it. So let's do that. Pivoting back to our actual MSF console, we're going to search for manage engine and see what results that we might get back. And this will take just a second. We can see we have a number of exploits that are available to us. The one that we're actually going to be interested in at this point is going to be a connection ID write vulnerability, which is the second to the last one there. So we're going to copy that real quick. And we're going to use that or as our exploit, should I say. So we do use, and then we go ahead and paste that real quick. And now you can see our console has changed context. So we know that that's actually there. We can show options and see that what we need to actually set for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our, our host eventually, but we're going to check payloads to make sure that a interpreter is available for this particular exploit. And if we look, we'll find that there's a number of payloads that are available for this. And the one that we're going to be interested in are any of the meterpreter ones. So we're going to scroll until we find where we can see meterpreter and see the list of meterpreter available exploits or payloads that are available. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab just a simple one, which is the reverse TCP. We're going to go ahead and copy that. And then we'll go down and we'll set that payload as the payload that we want this exploit to use. Now that we've pasted it in, we go ahead and enter and it's set the payload. Now we need to show the options again to see what other things we're going to have to do. So we're going to need to set our hosts. We're going to need to set the L host so it knows where to talk to. So let's set the R host first. We're going to use our 
one of our exploit machines, which is at 192.168.100.52. happens to be a Windows box. And when we were doing the scan, we, if you were saw, it was actually using a different port than what the default port is. So we're going to go ahead and set that so that it's 8022 instead of 8020. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the L host, which is our host, so that the reverse TCP knows how knows where to connect back to. So we go ahead and get that set. And once we hit enter, all of the settings will be set for this and we can run exploit to actually leverage the exploit and push the interpreter to the machine and then we'll get a connection back. So this will take just a second. And you can see now it's starting to make its connection to that server and it's managing the exploit and it's pushed the exploit back to the machine. And we're now starting to get our interpreter session. And right at this point, we have, we can see a interpreter prop there. So we actually have one. We can check it real quick by doing a get UID and we can see we're running. You've successfully exploited this system and have interpreter.